into exploring, discovering new things in science? In our lesson today, we will discover the changes in the materials when exposed to a certain condition such as temperature and when mixed with other materials. Before we go further to our lesson today, let's have a quick review. Tell what physical change happened to the solid materials through cutting, hammering, bending, and pressing. Match the picture of solid materials in column A with a physical change of appearance in column B. Supply the blank with a change in material. What is your answer in number one? Can you connect it? That's right. Letter C. The knee curved when it is bent. Number two. Very good. That is the letter A. The ribbon separates into pieces when it is cut. Number three. Right, D, the sponge flattened when it is pressed. And the last one, number four, yes, letter D, the tile broke when it is hammered. Okay, kids, did you get all the numbers right? Very good. Let us now proceed to activity number one. Experiment time! Activity 1 Melting me softly After this activity, you will be able to describe what happened to solid materials when heated and cold. These are the materials needed. Candle with candle holder, mud, and cold water in a bowl. Procedures Place the candle in a holder. Using mats, light the candle for 2 minutes. Observe what happens to the candle when it is heated. Drip some of the melted wax onto the bowl with cold water then observe. Guide questions. What happened to the candle when it was heated? Yes, the candle melted when it was heated. How did the candle change its state? Right, the candle changed from solid into liquid. What can you say about the temperature when the candle was heated? Of course, the temperature increased when the candle was heated. How will you resto restore the candle after melting? Yes, we can restore the candle after melting by putting it into cold water when we put the melted wax or the melted candle into cold water it turns into solid again the physical properties of solid materials such as size shape texture and form change when they are heated or cold Let us now proceed to Activity 2. In this activity, you will explain the effect of heating and cooling solid materials. Activity 2. Cool Crayons We will use this crayon to see the effect of heating and cooling solid materials. First, remove the paper wrap of the broken pieces of crayons. Heat water in a casserole and add the broken pieces of crayon to a heat proof bowl. Let the crayons melt completely. Stir using a spoon as needed. Remove the casserole from the flame and put the melted crayon in the mold. Let the melted crayon cool down for a few hours. Observe what happens to the melted crayons as it cools down. Because of the temperature change, the physical properties of solid materials change. Solid materials turn into liquid form when heated because of the increase of temperature. However, it will turn back 
into solid form when cooled because its temperature decreases. The arrangement of solid molecules changes from farther apart to very close or compact. Let us now move on to Activity 3. In this activity, you will describe what happens to solid materials when mixed with other solid materials. Activity 3. Let's mix. These are the materials needed in this activity. Onion and garlic. Coffee and sugar. Corn starch and baby powder. Iodized salt and cement. Baking soda and milk. Mongo seeds and rice grains. We will mix each pair of solid materials in a glass. First is onion and garlic. The mixture of onion and garlic remains visible and distinguishable from one another. It is called heterogeneous mixture. Next is coffee and sugar. When we combine coffee and sugar and mix them together, we cannot distinguish coffee from sugar. This mixture is what we call homogeneous mixture. Next, cornstarch and baby powder. Cornstarch and baby powder is also homogeneous mixture. When mixed, they cannot be distinguishable from one another. This is called homogeneous mixture. Another one is iodized salt and cement. When we mix iodized salt from cement, it cannot be distinguished from one another. This mixture is also what we call homogeneous mixture. Next is baking soda and milk powder. When we mix baking soda and milk powder, we cannot distinguish baking soda from milk powder. That's why we call this mixture homogeneous mixture. Okay, the last one. Rice grains and mango seeds. When we mix mango seeds and rice grains, we can still distinguish rice grains from mango seeds. That's why we call this mixture heterogeneous mixture. If the solid materials in a mixture remains visible and distinguishable from one another, it is called heterogeneous mixture.